So Sir Keir Starmer has faced significant backlash from many of his party members over his response to the Israel-Hamas conflict. 150 Labour Muslim councillors have signed a letter to the party leader urging him to call for an immediate ceasefire after he faced huge internal criticism after declaring Israel does have a right to withhold water and power from Gaza in retaliation for the invasion, despite later issuing a clarification that he only said Israel has a right to self-defense. Positions on the Israel-Palestine dispute have been a long-standing cause of contention within the Labour Party, but how should, should Sakia Starmer deal with the growing calls for a ceasefire in his own ranks? Well, with us to discuss this, a chief political commentator of the Independent, John Rental, and Imam Ajmal Mazroor. Um, Ajmal, if we can start with you first, thank you both for joining us. Uh, how, how annoyed is the Muslim community about the stance that Keir Starmer has, has taken? And, and what is it about his stance that has infuriated people so much? Thank you very much for inviting me. It is not just the Muslim community. I think people have, across the board especially those who have been very supportive of Labour Party, have been incensed by Keir Starmer's position. He claims to be a human rights lawyer. He claims to lead a party that is supposed to stand for universal rights and justice and human rights and human value. And yet he did not have enough compassion or humanity within him to actually say that while Israel has the right to defend itself, Palestinians have the right to live without occupation, without being brutalized, without being bombed to smithering, without their babies being bombed to bits. He did not have the courage within himself to stand up and say, Israel, stop. Even now he hasn't called for a ceasefire. It's cowardly. It's outrageous. And for him to think that he's going to be able to get Muslim votes in the next election, he needs to think again. He is not going to get the Muslim votes that he did before. In fact, it's not only Keir Starmer. Rishi Sunak should also be ashamed of himself because he thinks by standing with Israel and not saying anything for the Palestinians, especially the innocent, he's doing the right thing. In fact, he's doing the most immoral thing ever, and that is siding one and ignoring the other. The current crisis is a conflict between two people, and we need to stand objectively and say to end this awful fight between the two people, sit down and sort it out, guys, instead of siding one and ignoring the other. And Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak are both to be blamed for what's Ajmal. going on in Palestine, especially 4,000 children who have been okay. killed. Ajmal, when um, last week, obviously, Sir Keir Starmer did get himself into a pickle, he went to a, a mosque up in Cardiff there, we were seeing some pictures from it. Um, did you feel you were being used in a way? Did you know what that visit was for, to give him cover for what he'd said? You know, when Tony Blair invited us to his office, Downing Street, after having bombed Iraq and illegally invading it, I remember when he put his hand out to shake my hand, I said, I don't shake hands with people who are war criminals, those who invade and illegally attack other people. Keir Starmer, after supporting Israel to carpet bomb Palestine and kill so many innocent people, it is outrageous that he did not stand up and say, yes, there needs to be a right to defend yourself, but right to defend yourself comes with law and is governed by international law. I'm surprised he was allowed in a mosque. I would go one step further. And I'll say to all people, anywhere you are, any leader, political leader or a faith leader who is supporting the massacre of Palestinians and staying silent about the human rights abuse and carpet bombing and almost genocide that is being perpetrated by Israelis on the Palestinians, you should boycott them, ban them from coming to your centers of places of worship and communities and tell them you'll be voting with your feet in the next election. Uh, Look at these uh, images uh, that uh, you're showing. How many uh, babies do we need to see? killed before our leaders wake up. Ajmal, I mean, obviously, that, that, they're, they're, they're your opinions. I'm, I'm pretty sure Keir Starmer would deny that he's in favour of carpet bombing uh, Gaza from Israel, and I'm pretty sure Israel would deny that they're committing genocide. But uh, you're, you're giving your opinion, and, and that's fine. But I think we ought to just make that clear for, for, for balance. John, if I can bring you in here. I mean, how, how much of a problem is this for Keir Starmer that, uh, that what are this, these sort of growing calls on the backbenchers and amongst councillors and some resignations amongst councillors and the calls for a ceasefire? As, as Ajmal said, he, Keir Starmer's pretty much supported the government's line so far on the, on the conflict. How, how difficult is this going to get for him? Well, I, I, would, I would take issue with uh, Ajmal uh, in his suggestion that that's one-sided. I mean, I think... Uh, 
I think he he uh, failed to condemn the massacre of uh, of civilians by by Hamas in his uh, in what he said just just then. So there are there are different views, and I don't think his view is particularly representative of the the view in the Labour Party that causes Keir Starmer a problem. I mean, I think Keir Starmer does have a problem, but it is a problem with the with the mainstream uh, of the of the Labour Party. I think uh, what was really striking. Uh, this week was Jess Phillips, who's a, uh, a shadow minister. She stood up and expressed her unhappiness with uh, with Rishi Sunak's line, and by implication, therefore, uh, with, Keir St- with Keir Starmer's line. And this uh, and this call for a ceasefire has become the sort of rallying point for uh, for a lot of people in the Labour Party. John, you're right, because it seems to me you've got Andy Burnham coming out, you've got Sadiq Khan coming out, both of whom uh, fancy themselves as a future leader of the Labour Party. So I definitely say there were challenges there afoot already to be leader there of the Labour Party. But then you've got people like David Blunkett coming out saying, oh, look, you're all just saying this to make yourself feel better. He's telling the Labour Party, those people coming out there, to grow up. Strong words from David Blunkett. Absolutely, and I do, I do think actually David Blunkett represents uh, the centre of the Labour Party more than uh, uh, more, more than more than others, more than more than Andy Burnham and uh, and uh, Anna Sawa, for for example, as well. Uh, I mean, I think they they are they're, they're adopting a, a position for the sake of their their constituencies. Um, if they were if they were in Keir Starmer's position, I think they would adopt the same position as he has done. Which I think is the only uh, the only sensible position for the Labour Party to take. But well, John, what what should Keir Starmer do when he when he has shadow ministers, Rushanara Ali, uh, Imran Hussain, my next door neighbour in in Bradford? Um, they've both shadow ministers who have signed an EDM calling for a ceasefire. They've tweeted out that there should be a ceasefire. They've called for a ceasefire against it seems Keir Starmer's policy. How should he deal with shadow ministers who are going against the leader's policy? Should he should he sack them? No, I think I think he should he should say this is a matter of semantics because I mean he's after all calling for a humanitarian pause, which is the which is the U.S. government's position. Uh, so this is really a a question of, of, of words and definitions. Uh, I mean, a ceasefire on its own uh, seems to me personally to be a curious response to uh, to, to the Hamas uh, terrorist atrocity where they uh, attacked civilians indiscriminately. Uh, and to suggest a ceasefire in that context seems to me extremely one-sided, suggesting that Israel shouldn't be allowed to defend itself. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm opposed to the, to the use of that word, but I think it is very similar to a humanitarian pause, and I think the, the Labour Party can unite around that. Uh, and uh, I think sacking people is probably only going to make matters worse. Ajmal, I want to come back to the UK and the protests that are happening on the street, but not just that, the rise in anti-Semitism, huge, 1,400% in the last year, also a rise in Islamophobia. So what are religious leaders, your religious leaders, going to do to say we need to calm the tensions on the ground in Great Britain? We are GB News and I want to know that. Fantastic. Thank you for asking that question. Firstly, John, I have very categorically in many of my Friday sermons in my mosques, as well as on GB News itself, categorically condemned what uh, Hamas did to the Israelis. So you probably didn't hear that particular interview. But nevertheless, it's important for us to be consistent. We are condemning both sides. What we are seeing from Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak and many others is they're just condemning one side, forgetting the plight of the Palestinians who have suffered for 75 years of occupation illegal settlement, dehumanization, that must end. And we all need peace in that region. Secondly, from my mosque and all faith leaders, we must be genuine about it. We should invite our congregation and people around in our communities saying, look, we all stand for fairness and justice for all people. All life matters. No one should be living under occupation. No one should be living under the threats of terror attack. No one should be living under bombs. We should be creating a peaceful world. Ultimately, that's what religion teaches. And by the way, Judaism and Islam are so similar in their principles and their values. It's unbelievable. When I was a younger lad, but, I was writing but, a book but specifically about on the, specifically on the point, are you going to be saying if people are protesting, stop it and stop the attack, stop the anti-Semitism to your congregation, to your friends? 
I'm going to invite people to go and protest because unless we protest, this is our democratic right. Nobody would know the opposite view. Secondly, I'll be telling our congregation, Muslim congregation in my mosque, that we need to stand together and unite and fight against injustice in all shapes and sizes. So we want to create a peaceful state where Jews, Christians and Muslims live side by side as equal citizens with respect and dignity. We want to end the occupation in the Holy Land. Ajmal we want Masur, Holy Land thank you very much indeed. I don't think quite I got that definitive stopping the protest there. And John Runtill, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Well, he, he, I think he was quite right. He said that people have got a democratic right he, to protest. That's we fine, want to it? stop the attacks, though, on well, you know, know, the anti-Semitism and the Islamophobia. Know, but there's yeah. a difference yeah, between bit. protesting. There's so, a difference between going out on a protest and then taking going out on some anti-Semitic... Uh, yeah, mission. so was... one could bubble into So what I'm saying is, but are you going to stop that? When you speak to your congregation, it's all right to protest, but absolutely no attacks on yeah. people. Well, I mean, I, I mean, look, there's, been, there's, been, there's clearly been an unacceptable rise in exactly. anti -Semitism and Islamophobia. And Islamophobia. And, yeah. but both, both of them are, yeah. are outrageous. And but I, I was just waiting for him to say, I'm going to yeah. tell my congregation, no attack, no nothing. We don't want to do this. Not on, in this country. Not in this country. No. Well, I think he was right to say they could protest. Yeah.